Welcome back. I'm reading chapter 14, Universal Pest. We're going to need two short-range blasters, one Omega GDD and one Biomat Compass, Connor said. And oh yeah, and the uh, 2,999 Moon Jumper Express to get us there. Commander Neuters gave him a peculiar look. You're very well informed as to our armory for someone who's never been aboard the ship before. As if the Bassgate's arsenal were a vending machine, Neuters punched the codes into of the devices Connor had requested into a touch screen, and they were brought out on a conveyor belt. The short-range blasters were long and silver, with bright blue light pulsating from the barrels, just like the cyborg soldier's guns. The Omega GDD was short and round like a propane tank and had a small keypad at the top. The Biomat compass looked like a thick silver watch with a holographic arrow. The commander handed a blaster to each of the twins, and Connor fastened the compass around his waist, a wrist. The Omega GDD was heavy, so Alex and Connor carried it together. What do the Omega GDD and the Biomat Compass do? Alex asked. The Omega GDD stands for Gamma Detonation Device. It's a very powerful bomb that uses gamma rays to vaporize its targets, Neuters explained. The Biomat Compass detects biological material within 300-yard radius. Alex gulped. I'm sorry I asked, she said. To detonate the Omega GDD, type in the code LRRH215, await for confirmation, and then run, Neuter said. The 2099 Moon Jumper Express is in the spacecraft, ha spacecraft hangar. I'll show it to you. The twins followed the commander through the spaceship. The short-range blasters the and Omega GDD made Alex uneasy, and she held them away from her body. She was terrified the tiniest bump or tap would set them off and injure everyone. Connor, on the other hand, couldn't have been more excited to be holding the weapons from his story. When he was a kid, he used to spend hours pretending he would fight evil aliens on distant planets with the devices now in his hands. He was eager to let go, to get to Lollipopagus to save live his childhood fantasy. Connor twisted and pointed the blaster around the halls as they walked through the bass gate. He reenacted scenes from his favorite action movies and even made the sound effects to go along with it. Connor, knock it off, Alex said. You're going to hurt someone with that. Relax, I have the safety on, he said. Oops. Okay, now I have the safety on. The commander and the twins walked through a set of automatic doors and arrived at the, the hangar. He showed them to the small spacecraft with the words 2,999 Moon Jumper Express engraved on the side of it. The spacecraft was the size of an SUV and looked like a, small, a mini version of the Bassgate. It was made of red steel and had two wings and a small crown of satellites and antennas. Neuters pressed the button on the side of it and the door of the spacecraft slid open. There were two seats inside and compartments to store their weapons, but no sign of the steering controls. How are we supposed to fly this thing? Alex asked. The 2,999 Moon Jumper Express is controlled from the Bassgate, Neuters said. It prevents our spacecraft from being hijacked by orphanotics. No offense. Alex was relieved. If her brother had been planning to pilot the 2,999 Moon Jumper Express himself, she wasn't sure they would have made it to Lollipopagus. The twins stored their weapons in the compartments, tightened their helmets, and strapped themselves into the seats. Neuters hesitated before closing the spaceship door behind them. Are you sure you know what you're doing? He asked like a concerned father. 100%, Connor said. Once you've exterminated one alien insect species, you've exterminated them all. By the way, would you mind holding on to this until I get back? Connor handed the commander his backpack. It'll be safe with me, Neuter said. Good luck, exterminators. May the cosmos smile upon you. The commander moved three fingers in a circle through the air and then pointed to his heart. Connor copied the motion exactly, and Alex did her best to mimic him, but it was bizarre to her. Neuter shut the door of the 2,999 Moon Jumper Express and headed out of the hangar. May the cosmos be a smile upon you, Alex laughed. Is that like a Galaxy Queen catchphrase? Do you know how hard it is coming up with an original science fiction saying, Connor said? Nearly impossible. Once the commander was safely out of the hangar, the large compartment door opened to space. The gravity disappeared and the twins would have floated out of their seats if they weren't strapped in so securely. The engines of the 2,999 Moon Jumper Express roared to life and the spacecraft threw out of the blast basket hangar and reached toward the planet of Lollipopagus below. The ride was smooth and serene. The purple planet and its turquoise rings glowed exquisitely. 
Even though she wasn't thrilled they were en route to exterminate bugs, Alex couldn't deny how amazing it was to be gliding between a massive, sp between a massive spaceship and the atmosphere of an alien planet. I have to admit, this is pretty cool, she said. Connor didn't respond. Alex turned to check on him and saw tears glistening in his eyes. He had seen so many things from his imagination come to life, but seeing an actual planet was surprisingly emotional. Are you okay, she asked. I'm fine, Connor said, just allergies. In space, she laughed. Yeah, I think there might have been a cat in here before us. Alex just smiled and didn't press any further. Well, whatever you're reacting to, thanks for sharing it with me. This is an experience I would have never had without you. The tender moment was interrupted by a loud beeping sound. The twins looked around the spacecraft nervously, afraid something was broken. The beeping was followed by an automated voice. Five, four, three, it said. Connor, what are they counting down? The 2999 Moon Jumper Express blasted toward Lollipop August at the power of, with the power of a thousand rockets. The twins were slammed back into their seats with so much force it felt like invisible ele elephants were sitting on them. Their teeth rattled and their cheeks rippled. They were moving so fast they couldn't breathe, let alone speak or scream. The spacecraft zoomed under the turquoise rings, shot through Lollipopagus atmosphere, and headed straight for the rough surface. They were moving thousands of miles per second and showed no sign of slowing down. Right when the twins were convinced the spacecraft was going to crash, it suddenly jerked upright and pointed its engines to the ground. The 2999 Moon Jumper Express made a surprisingly gentle landing on the Lollipopagustian service. The spacecraft door opened automatically. You've arrived at your destination, the same automated voice said. Enjoy your visit to Lolly Poppy Gust. Alex and Connor's hearts were racing so fast they felt frozen in one perpetual beat. When their bodies finally caught up with their minds, they both let out a long, terrified, and overdue scream. Alex, I think I peed a little, Connor said. Me too, she said. The twins climbed out of their seats and stumbled off the spacecraft. They had to look around the planet's surface as their hearts returned to normal and feeling came back to their arms and legs. Lollipopagus was covered with rolling purple hills and had a bright pink sky. The planet's turquoise rings arced over them and cast a shadow on the ground. The gravity wasn't as high on the planet as it had been on the Bass Gate and the twins felt stronger and lighter in their spacesuits. They retrieved the weapons out of the spacecraft's compartments and ventured onto the planet. Connor glanced between the compass and the land around them, but there wasn't any sign of life anywhere. What kind of bugs are we looking for, Alex asked. Ants, beetles, flies? The ones that we have to find are called polycrabs, Connor told her. They're a spider, scorpion, and wasp combination. Just the description of the insects made Alex gasp and choke on air. What the heck is wrong with you, Connor, she asked. How could you even think of something so terrible? Sorry, it, would have been, it was in one of my nightmares, he said. I thought it would make a great alien monster, so I put it in the story. It's not like I plan to meet any of those villains in my stories. If that's what's crawling around your subconscious, you need deep psychological help, Alex said. What's the plan to exterminate them? It'll be simple, Connor said. All we have to do is find the entrance to their colony, drop the Omega GDD inside, and then take off. Alex shook her head. You and I both know it's never that easy, she said. Who would have killed those bugs if we weren't here? The cyborg queen would have been so desperate she would have teamed up with the orphanotics, Connor explained. They would have exterminated the polycrabs, but would have had to share lollipopagus afterward. Then we make a nice plot twist for her, Alex said. By the way, I've been meaning to ask, what is Commander Neuter's deal? How did he end up working for the Cyborg Queen? She saved his planet from being sucked into a black hole, Connor said. Neuter's was so grateful he devoted his life to working for her. Also, it's helpful to have someone aboard the basket who's not connected to a battery in case of a power outage. The biomat compass suddenly lit up and an arrow appeared on its screen. Looks like we got our first catch of the day, Connor said. The compass guided the twins through the purple hills to the edge of a deep, wide hole the size of an empty swimming pool. The compass pointed to something of, of biological material in the bottom of it. Alex and Connor held their short-range blasters tightly with their fingers against the triggers and cautiously peered into the hole. Instead of a polycrab, they found a teal worm the size of a small dog. It was chubby and had several rolls like a caterpillar, but it was shaped more like a jelly bean than a noodle. It had big black button eyes, no nose, and a wide mouth that naturally shaped into a smile. The worm merrily rolled around the hole without a care in the world. It laughed and talked to itself like a happy baby. That is the cutest thing I've ever seen, Alex said. What is it? 
A bliss worm, Connor said. They're a species of worm that's always happy regardless of the situation they're in. The bliss worms are one of the few remaining species left on this planet. The polycrabs have hunted all the other bugs. What's it doing in the bottom of the hole, she asked. Does it live there? No, the polycrabs dig holes to trap prey, Connor said. The poor little guy must have fallen inside. The bliss worm certainly didn't look like it had fallen into a trap. It giggled as, if, as it somersaulted across the hole. It looked up at the twins and waved one of its four tiny hands. Oh, let's rescue it, Alex said. It's too adorable to be eaten. The twins lowered their weapons and slid down the side of the hole. The bliss worm was so excited to have company, it curled around their feet and purred like a kitten. Alex petted the friendly bug. Its body felt like a gummy bear. I think it likes us, she said. Would it survive on Earth? You want to take it home? Connor asked. Alex leaned down to, and the bliss worm crawled into her arms. It pressed its mouth against the glass of her helmet and gave her a big slobbery kiss. Alex was filled with a warm, fuzzy feeling and she hugged the bliss worm like a long lost pet. You know, maybe we should rethink this extermination thing, she said. Maybe instead of killing all the polycrabs, we could just set traps and release them on another planet. The polycrabs are really no different from the bliss worm. They never asked to come to Lollipopagus. Let's be humane about it. The bliss worm crawled to the ground and curiously circled the Omega GDD. It stretched its mouth over the top of it and swallowed the bomb hole. Since the detonation device was bigger than the bliss worm, its body stretched around it like a sock over a soda can. That worm better cough up our bomb or it's about to have a really bad, some really bad heartburn, Connor said. It must be hungry, Alex said. What does it usually eat? Space weeds and stuff, Connor said, which is really strange because polycrabs don't eat herbivores. They prey on other predators. Suddenly, the twins and Blissworm were eclipsed by a large shadow. Alex and Connor turned around and saw an enormous creature climbing on to, into the hole behind them. It had big red eyes, fangs, two claws, eight legs, and three tails like a scorpion. At the tip of each tail was a long, sharp stinger. The creature's fangs dripped with saliva and it snapped its claws at, as it approached them. It was easily the most terrifying thing the twins had ever seen and they both froze. The bliss worm waved at the monster and blew it a kiss. And that's a polycrab, Connor said. It has 10 limbs and three tails, Alex noted. That's 13 appendages. Why would you name it a polycrab? Poly means seven. Oh, Connor said. That explains why I failed the geometry quiz. Alex thought making sense of the creature would somehow make it less scary, but it did the opposite. The more she realized how little her brother knew about the alien insect he created, the more frightening it became. Now I get why the worm was in the hole. It wasn't prey. The polycrab was using it for bait, Connor said. Alex was afraid to even ask. Bait for what? Us. The polycrab vaulted toward the twins with its claws and stinger raised. Alex died behind her brother and used him as a shield. Forget what I said about being humane, Alex yelled. Kill it! Kill it! Kill it now! Connor pointed his short-range blaster and shot the creature seconds before it tackled them. A bright blue blast hit the polycrab and it exploded in slime and guts. The innards rained down on the twins and they almost became sick at the sight of it. Alex tried wiping the guts off her helmet, but they only smeared over the glass. Next time, I'm going to need a full itinerary before we travel into one of your short stories, she said. You got it, Connor said. I'm going to stop there and I'll continue the second half of the chapter in the next video. I'll see you guys then. Bye!